Hey everyone, we are going live with um, Dr. Stephanie Peacock. Uh, she is one of the contributors to the Ultimate Vegan Health and Weight Loss Bundle, uh, which is taking place right now from uh, 3rd to 12th of February. So um, yeah, she's just joined and she's requested. So let me accept her request. And let me pin the comment as well. Hello. 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 Hey. Hi. Good to see you. Oh, it's so good to see you too. It's so nice to meet you. Because yes. I was in the bundle together last year, but we never got to do a live. So this is so nice. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes that's right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So um, maybe you just like to get started, like tell, um, you know, people who you are, what you do and yeah, and then go from there. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for asking. So um, yeah, my name is Dr. Stephanie Peacock. I am a holistic doctor in Southern California in the United States. Um, and my practice really focuses around gut health and environmental toxins. So that's kind of what I contributed in the bundle was a 50 page ebook talking about um, various toxins and chemicals. Oh, thank you for showing. <laughs> yeah, the various like toxins and chemicals that are found in a lot of our everyday products. And a lot of them are found within the kitchen that can get in contact with our food. So that's why I really wanted to bring awareness to this because really it can come into contact with our food. It can disrupt our hormones. It can disrupt our gut health. And really some of these swaps are pretty simple and easy to make. And I really try to list that out in my book, just explaining, you know, some of the research behind a lot of these different chemicals and how you can make the different swaps uh, pretty easy. I provided little links in there to help make the swaps. So. <laughs> Oh, nice. I, I was um, um, watching your presentation with Sid Notter and I was like, wow, that, that's a really good presentation. There's so much detail. It was like, wow, a lot of things to digest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. It definitely, and thank you, by the way, for saying that. I had a fun time doing that interview with her. Um, she's amazing too. But yeah, so um, I, yeah, I had a fun time doing that, but it is, it definitely can feel like it's a lot to digest, but that's why I tried to break it down in the book, just like, here's a couple of simple swaps to make, right? And just take your time doing it. And it doesn't have to happen overnight. I mean, the beautiful part of it is, is like, it's the same thing with food and incorporating better plant-based nutrition into your routine, right? It's like, if you were to change one meal per day from the standard American diet, right? To more yeah. plant diet, that makes such a huge change. And it's the same concept when it comes to swapping out some of these chemicals. It's, if you just make one change, even once, like every few weeks or a month or something like mm. that, really amounts to such a huge change. So yeah, so I definitely like to make that message clear because yeah, it can be overwhelming when we see these, all these chemicals. We're like, oh my goodness, they're everywhere. What do we do? <laughs> yeah, maybe you want to talk a little bit about what uh, environmental toxins. Yeah, if, if yeah. people don't know. Yeah, let's talk about it so um in the book i talk about five of the most common um toxins that are found in our home and they're the, also the most widely studied ones so mm. um, that have been linked to disrupting our gut okay. health and they're all okay. endocrine disrupting chemicals meaning they disrupt our delicate hormonal system within our body so the five most common ones are going to be bpa phthalates heavy metals pfas um, and then pesticides. And so circling back to BPA, BPA is a very common one. A lot of people know about this one and it's bisphenol A. It's actually found in many plastics. It was originally used as synthetic estrogen, but was later found to be able to harden plastic, which is why we see it in so much plastic mm -hmm. stuff. So um, easy swaps you can make for that are really just swapping out plastic water bottles for glass or stainless steel, whatever you're using to store your food in, try to opt for glass storage containers versus plastic storage containers. And then I give tons of other advice in the book too that you can do as well. Um, the next one is called phthalates. That's actually also found in plastics. It's, um, it makes plastic more bendy and flexible. So actually the more flexible plastic is, the more phthalates it has. Also been linked to our gut health 
Um, so it's found in plastics, but it's also found in scented products or a lot of fragrance products, a lot of like dish soaps and laundry detergent, like that. So um, I give also great props for that too, that you can look out for and how to, um, how to read the back of the labels to offer products that don't contain um, yeah. Heavy metals is another one. Uh, I go into detail on that in the book, but really the naturally occurring in the environment and can be found in uh, products that are in more of a concentrated form. So a lot of teas and coffees, uh, protein powders, if people are using those, mushroom extracts, things like that. That's, that really kind of dials into wanting to make sure that a company that creates those products is actually third party testing. So they're using a third party to test for those um, chemicals mm. that are sorry, metals that will be in the products. And then pesticides, just trying to offer more organic uh, produce. And if you're unable to find organic, maybe soaking your produce in a baking soda and vinegar solution that actually does help to reduce the amount of pesticides that might be in the product. And then finally, um, PFAS, that's known as the forever chemical. It's in a lot of nonstick items. So yeah, yeah like your top <laughs> products like that, it makes cooking so easy, <laughs> but that's, um, that's a good one to try to opt for switching to, because especially when you're heating the element, it's actually absorbing into the food and getting direct contact with the food. So I always tell people opt for glass, stainless steel, 100% ceramic, or uh, cast would be your best bet for when you're cooking food. So we actually have some options, which is great. <laughs> so, so yeah, so those are the five big ones. And yeah, I go into way more detail in the book, but I don't want to, um, you know, give too much detail here just because I know it's a lot to <laughs> digest. So, yeah. yeah, so so thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I'm actually speaking to Dr. Stephanie Peacock, um, who is one of the contributors in the Ultimate Vegan Health and Weight Loss Bundle. This is a mouthful. I, <laughs> it really is. It's like, I've, I've messed it up so many times. I, I don't know what I've called it. Sometimes I just call it the Ultimate Health Bundle because that's all I can remember. <laughs> Just like it's a it's a health bundle. Yeah, and uh, if you guys have any questions, um, please leave it in the question box. There's a question box um, on Instagram below. Then um, you know we can see the questions and I can read it out to um, Dr. Steph, uh, so she can help answer it. Um, one of the things that stood out um, because you talked about BPA and then you mentioned in the ebook e e that even if it's BPA free, it still might be toxic. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I know. I know this is one that I, a lot of people have been bringing up, and I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately, um, so with when it comes to BPA, right, it's, so it's bisphenol, there's certain kinds of bisphenol. And so it's a great marketing we use to say, oh, it's BPA free, but they're actually just using another form of bisphenol. It's most commonly BPF or BPS, which are just as harmful, if not more harmful than BPA itself. So it's, it's like a little loophole that a lot of companies use. So yes, yeah, so usually if a plastic or canned item says BPA free, I would still be not using it and trying to stick to glass or um, stainless steel or any container if something might come in. So yeah. So I have a question. What about like, okay, so I, I got these um, storage containers because um, I think after watching um, Tammy do her, her batch prep and all that. And then it says BPA free. So I don't know about what about storage containers. Are these okay to be used? So is that a, a um, I, I'm having a hard time seeing. So is it a full plastic container? It's just BPA free. That's what it, even the, the, the actual container itself, not just the lid is plastic. Yeah, the actual oh. container itself is plastic as well. This is the Lock Lock brand. I don't know whether you. Yeah. I think it. Oh, so you know, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, pretty much any I know any plastic is going to have that, that bisphenol. So really, just like off, off, you really don't. Oh my gosh, I'm concerned. You want, want to? Opt for I need to get plastic. these right. <laughs> yes, yes, you want to offer those exactly. Because uh, I I got them, but they're really heavy. So okay. Yeah. So it's 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 basically. Yes. This versus yes, these. That, that one right there. That's so this one. one. And actually, I did I did do a live talk about it a little bit um, when she was showing me her fridge. And my goodness, she has the most beautiful fridge in the world because she is so organized. But yeah, we talked a little bit about um, glass. And she's like, yep, I'm 
getting on the glass. She like had all, most of hers were definitely glass storage containers and we were chatting about that. So that was really fun. But oh, yeah, cool. trying to stick to, to uh, just glass storage containers <laughs> if you can. Yeah, because these are so much lighter and I, it's just easier to wash. I, yeah. I guess, but if I don't put hot food in it, because I, I do ma mainly raw, right? Is that okay then? If so it's still, if, if it's being stored, it's still coming into contact and we'll still leach it. Now, when it comes to putting hot food items, that definitely is worse. You're going to be leaching way more chemicals from it. But even if it's not hot, it's still getting into contact. And that contact is allowing those chemicals to get into the food. And the same thing with water. So like, for example, like a plastic, this, this is stainless steel, but mm -hmm. um, and this is a hydro flask. Hydro flask is such a great brand or clean canteen for stainless steel water bottles. I tried using glass water bottles and I broke one time over it. <laughs> and it was, I was like, oh, I never again. <laughs> so I stick with stainless steel, but um, same concept. So if you're using a plastic water bottle and you're drinking, you know, eight to 10 cups of water a day, that water is constantly getting into contact, right? With the plastic container and you're drinking and ingesting it. So same kind of concept, it just with the food storage. So um, yeah, so those are the two, truly, those are the two biggest ones I tell people, you know, cause we're constantly eating, we're constantly, mm. you know, drinking water. So if you can reduce those two things, what you're storing food in, what you're drinking your water out of, that makes hu a huge difference in your health and the amount of chemicals that can overburden your detox systems in your body, so. Yeah. What about, say, like, silicone spatulas? Silicone, okay, so, um, so <laughs> I, I feel like you're gonna not wanna do a lot with me ever again. <laughs> so, um, okay, so silicone is actually great. Um, now this is a material that when you when it's when it's room temperature or cold it's fine it okay. actually is not leaching the chemicals but when it is heated that's when you start to see a leaching of chemicals from the whatever the material is so it's a spatula or a silicone baking tray mm -hmm. things like that so i usually recommend if you are cooking with if you're using a silicone spatula totally fine if you're just like let's say you're baking right or you're okay. making something that you're not heating that's totally fine but if you are using like a silicone um, baking tray right and you're putting it in an oven 400 degrees fahrenheit that's where you that's a big no and that's where you don't want to be doing that so so the silicone spatula yes it's fine as, as long as you're using it for um not hot items <laughs> so what do you suggest um as an alternative when we want to use it for hot items yeah, so what I use um, for personally what I use, and I can actually send you the link for the specific set that I have. Um, I like to use wooden um, spatulas. So I use like a bunch of like wooden ones that are absolutely fantastic. So right. not bendy, but that's what I personally use. And then, yeah. I, yeah, and then um, I also use uh, like stainless steel as well. And you know, there, there might be, an, I haven't personally looked into like bendy, right? Like, because I, you know, I, obviously you're a chef so you need to um so you yeah of, like, i need to because i need to scoop it out from my like you know these kind of things and all that so um yeah. this is the best way to use to scoop it out because if not i mean i have like like this one is for my rice and all that out oh, my quinoa yeah um yeah, yeah but it's really hard yeah it's, hard. Yeah, it's really hard right you know, let me look into it for you and I'll message you with it because I know that there's got to be something out there that's, that you can use that's a little bit more bendy. Like at this point, people have come up with amazing products that are non-toxic that can be used. I just am not sure because I don't cook all the, right? Like I know this is like what you do. So yeah. you need easy, right? To, to get into place, yeah, to bake and cook and everything. So um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll actually look into it for you because you're not the first person to ask me that question. So uh, I'll see what I can find that way I can have alternatives. And then, um, on my website too, I don't have it in my bio, but I actually list like tons of great kitchen options and things like that for people to just because, yeah, it is such a common question I get, like, what can I use in the kitchen? Because it's like, is everything toxic? <laughs> not, but <laughs> it feels like it could be. So, yeah, I think the only thing is because you live in the US, so it's easier to get those items and it's more affordable. Whereas like here, the stasher bags are so expensive. We can get them, but they're like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
so I understand that. Yeah. And, and even the stature bags here, I still think are kind of pricey too. And I've just taken my time like accumulating them. But, and, and for those people who aren't, who are listening that might not know what stature bag is, it's actually just a, like a silicone bag that can be used in place of like a Ziploc or just uh, for um, like food storage, which is like fantastic. I love it. Um, but you know, that brings me to like a, a that, you, that, that statement actually um, brings me to a really good point is that yes, there's certain things that you'll be able to eliminate in toxin wise that you can reduce in your kitchen and in your home. And there are certain things that are just going to be really hard to do and are just not going to be convenient for certain people. Like, for example, what you said, like not living in the States, we can order something on Amazon and it'll be here in a second and it'll be at like a fraction of the cost of what you would get. Right. So it's yeah. easier for some of us. And so this is where really reducing your exposure in areas that you do have good control in is mm -hmm. really important. And then, for other things, I just wouldn't even worry about it because when you're starting to lessen the burden on your body with certain choices that you're making, like opting for a non-plastic water bottle, right? Or maybe starting to cook more in stainless steel. Those are huge. Like those are huge things that you can do. And if you're having to use a Ziploc, you know, here and there, or the silicone spatula, things like that, like that's okay, right? It's, it's really about what we can do overall to reduce our toxic burden. And then that leads me into the next thing is nourishing our bodies with plant-based mm -hmm. foods, movement, meditation, things like that. Those really support our gut health and our liver and all our detox pathways to eliminate the toxins we come into contact with, right? So, so yeah. our detox organs in our body for a reason, it's our gut, our lungs, our liver, our kidneys, our lymphatic system, and our skin through sweating. Mm -hmm. And really by doing those other lifestyle changes actually helps so much in eliminating. That's the reason we have them. So it's reducing your, uh, your burden, your toxic burden, like when and where you can, yeah. but if you can't do it, it's okay. You know, we can't be perfect. I'm not perfect by all means. Like I do what I can, but you know, I, if I was trying to be perfect, I'd be living in a cabin in the middle of the woods somewhere like, <laughs> yes. I was with no contact with anybody. So yeah, it's <laughs> really about doing what you can and not letting it stress you out too, because as we know, stress is a toxin. It's an internal toxin. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm glad that we talked about that because yeah, that's something I always like to share. I'm like, don't get overwhelmed. It's okay. Just do what you can. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I always I have to remind myself I'm just doing the best that I can, you know. And then and like you say, it's it's not just you know, it's just not just um, swapping out stuff. I mean, it, it's a whole lifestyle and it's everything as well. You yeah. know, it's not just uh, yeah one thing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's just it's um, and I was just chatting with this. Um, actually, I see Jacqueline just joined. I was just chatting oh. with her here too. Um, we were talking with her and uh, Colin about, Chef Colin, about, you know, just other things that you can do to support your body, right? Like, so, yeah. like, sweating, making sure that you're sweating and optimizing that detox pathway, right? Getting in proper nutrients, breath work to decrease your stress level because we're in such a sympathetic state. At like constantly with you know society like everyone's just running around and so it's easy to get caught up in it and just taking those measures daily and just doing some gentle movement and things like that to help support your detox systems really goes a long way so. yeah i i try to incorporate a daily movement practice so i usually do qigong but because we have the bundle right now so i'm trying out the different uh movement um yeah uh, uh classes in the bundle so Hi, Jacqueline. I actually tried out your 25-minute uh, movement session um, that she contributed because uh, they have like, what they call, what is it? The smallest ebook you'll find on fitness or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. smallest ebook or something. Yeah, yeah. And she has a 25. I haven't done it yeah. yet, but I was telling her, I was like, I'm going to do it and I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. I did that. Then I think the next day I did the chair yoga and then now I'm sore. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though you're moving muscles that you probably you know what I mean like because you're doing a different workout so that's awesome <laughs> yeah it was really funny because I usually just go like for a, a morning walk and I do qigong which is uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with um, qigong yeah so it, it's more of energy it, it's um, chi I think Chinese so it's uh, more of energy and flow yeah. and breathing and all that um, but I thought you know I'll try that out and then I was like, I don't know whether I can get through this 25 minute thing with the yoga man and here and then, <laughs> but, but yeah, then I, I did it. I was like, wow, this is great. And then two days later, I'm like, okay, now I mean, <laughs> now uh, I feel sore. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. 
That's incredible. Oh my gosh, Jacqueline, I'm definitely going to be doing it this week. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. So, so have you tried out? Um, I know I saw you trying out um, um, some recipes in the bundle. Maybe you can talk about what you've tried out, what you've checked out, you know, what a cool stuff. Definitely, definitely. And I want to make sure we leave time to talk about what you contributed to because your recipes look absolutely amazing. Oh. And I need to try your recipes too because like they look so good. Um, but yeah, I've tried out a few different recipes. So um, my good friend Stacey Aini with the Urban Pharmacy, she has like a 10-day detox mm. plan and tons of amazing, amazing plant-based recipes in there. And I'm such a sucker for like a good muffin. So um, she has like really easy like banana blueberry muffin. I mean, all her recipes are really simple, um, which is like my, which is what I love because I don't like to spend too much time in the kitchen because uh, I will get overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like five five minutes to whip up the muffins. It was like bananas and blueberries and date syrup and oats and a couple other things. It in the other minutes, it was so good. And I also made, um, what else did I make? So I made Tammy Kramer's, uh, it was like a salad recipe. That was oh, yeah. nice. tons of leftovers. So my husband and I had it for lunch today. It was super yummy. Um, and then I actually made, um, I'm going to post about it tomorrow, but I made, um, Rachel with Rachel Detroit cook, uh, coaching. Mm -hmm. She has really yummy like potato, this potato recipe is like little potato chips where you just slice them really thinly and you put it in the oven and you make little chips from it. So oh. um, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> so what about you? What have you made from, have you made, I, I saw that you've been posting about some of the recipes. It looks so yeah. Good. I actually made a whole list because we got the access to the bundle um, much earlier. So like, I've been making stuff like even before the bundle was launched. So um, I tried out some of the raw stuff and some of the cooked stuff as well. So I tried out uh, the coconut curry by Chris Kendall because he has an ebook on sauces. Oh my and God. then, yeah, that was good. Um, and then um, raw skin health. Um, she, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I'll, I'll be, she'll be interviewing me on Sunday. Um, but she goes by raw skin health is um is Vietnamese lady. So um I tried out her warm raw ramen noodles that was really good. Oh. Um kimchi, I, I I I have my own kimchi recipes, but I, I love eating kimchi. So I made um Dr. Vanessa Mendez's um she had a I think gut health boosting kimchi. Yeah, so I did that. So those those are some of it. Oh, I actually have a question for you about kimchi, like um or just like, you know, eating fermented foods, right? Like how much should we eat in a day? Yeah. So ideally you want to be eating at least like six tablespoons worth. And that's also about a half a cup. So that's okay. what you really want to be eating per, per day. Yeah. yeah I, I remember reading somewhere they said that you, um, ideally it, you should be eating, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, fermented or probiotics food. We have probiotics like with every meal, but I'm like, how do I, uh, I guess for breakfast, we can have like, you know, coconut yogurt or something like homemade coconut yogurt. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, so you can definitely have something fermented like a coconut kefir yeah. or like yogurt or something for sure. And then like maybe like even what I'll do is I will just have like a couple tablespoons of um, or a couple spoonfuls really of like whether I make sauerkraut or kimchi because I ferment it here as well at my yeah. house. And just because it's also just 10 times cheaper to do it yourself and it's yeah. so yummy flavors however you like right um but i'll just have a couple bites before i eat and i actually i i really feel like it stimulates the digestive process too just by getting those like amazing like enzymes bacteria and everything going so yeah so i'll just kind of even if it's not like a part of my meal i'll just kind of eat it right before and then i'll make it right. <laughs> so. yeah i just put i i just usually just put it in my salad because i usually have like a if i'm i'm at home i'm not going out then i have a huge salad uh, for my lunch anyway so I just put all the kimchi or anything that I like to ferment in in the salad and it works so good yeah. oh I love I love um like sauerkraut or kimchi in a salad I think it's delicious so um so let's talk about what you contributed because okay. I want to okay. talk about it and and then I want you to also tell me like what maybe one or two recipes that are your favorite that you think I should try out because I'm going to make one of them this week so I would love for you <laughs> you know like what you're I know you probably have a bunch of favorites because they all look so yummy but yeah I'll leave the floor to you <laughs> yeah so I have two contributions the first one is a, a a brand new course um it's called Mexican Fiesta yeah because um I I was just craving for like Mexican flavors um um I did travel I used to travel to US a lot and I had like 
really good Mexican food when I was in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I missed that. So, um, um, yeah, so I made like raw vegan tacos, nachos, and quesadillas. I, so I know that a lot of places and there are a lot of recipes on raw vegan nachos and, and, and tacos, but quesadillas, I hardly see any. I think Lisa has one, but that's basically it. So I thought like, yeah, I'll make that. Um, there's also chili and there's also like, you know, I also show you how to make, put together your own Mexican spice, oh. Mexican seasonings. So you can like, you know, spice up your food and all that. That's okay. uh, yeah. And then, oh. I had a purple tortilla chip, which was, I thought was quite cool because in Malaysia we have like, yeah, I, I see them selling all these uh, purple tortilla chips. <laughs> and I was like, I, I need to make, yeah, a raw vegan version of that. I think oh. I used like um, purple sweet potato. Yeah. Oh. I'm- and some corn and all that. I love sweet yeah. potato. I could eat that every day. Amazing. Okay. That sounds incredible. Yeah. Oh, that you had that course because Mexican food is like my favorite. It really is. It's just my personal favorite. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I actually have a second contribution as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my. Hold on, let me try and get it. Um, so my focus is on Asian food. So this is my. Let's see whether I can get to the. So it's called Fun with Asian Food Three. It's a course. Um, yeah. So it's basically all. Uh, it's got like 20 recipes of all my favorite um, Asian food that I eat here in Malaysia. I'm based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And um, they're all raw vegan. They're all oil-free. And um, there's also like 20, 29 um, to video tutorials to show you how to make it. And oh. it's all, yeah, it, it all comes with like full color um, pictures as well. So you can, you know, figure out how to make it. Because some people might not be, familiar so familiar with some of the recipes because it's very local yeah that's amazing yeah. no that's actually a really good idea to make sure you have the pictures in there just in case someone sees the like what it's titled right and all the ingredients but they don't know how it's supposed to look or turn out right so that's a really good yeah. idea so yeah but, so both of these sound amazing by the way i'm really excited i'm gonna have to take your courses <laughs> that so what's like your favorite what's your favorite recipe from the mexican um food course and then from the asian food one Okay, since I have the Asian food one open, let me see. Oh, I actually like the black pepper udon a lot. Um, okay. I don't know whether you can see okay. that or not. Yeah, oh my gosh, amazing. Right. Yeah, so it, it tastes really good because the, the it has like, there's this black pepper sauce and um, yeah. It's just one of the things, I, I re- this was inspired by a dish when I used to travel a lot. Um, I used to go to the airport and there was this... Um, at the like the airport canteen, there was this particular stall that would uh, be able to make vegan black pepper udon for me. So that's kind of like my go-to meal that I always have at the airport. So I was like, but then you know, I I always feel very lethargic and sluggish after that because of I think because of the udon noodles and also I'm sure like the black pepper sauce has like MSG and all the nasty additives in it. So I was like, oh, I need to make like a raw vegan healthy version which still tastes really nice. <laughs> so yeah, that was my um that was my recipe. And then I guess um for the Mexican fiesta, if you can try out the the quesadilla. But I mean, it's you know. Mexican food has so many components, right? You need to make the tortillas, you need to make the mushroom filling, you need to make the cheese sauce, you make the salsa verde, <laughs> you need to make the crema and all that. But yeah, that 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 would be quite cool as well. I really I really enjoy making that. I would, I feel like I now that I'm looking back at the photos again, I'm like, oh, I should really make this all over again. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll probably I I'll definitely try both of them, but um, I know that like. I love quesadillas. I just love, they're so yummy. And, you know, this Sunday um, in the U.S. is Super Bowl. It's like oh, the okay. ball thing. I'm not actually yeah. a football fan, but my husband is. So anyway, uh, okay. ball food that I'll make. So I'll probably, and I actually did make quesadillas one year, like a few years ago. I made like hummus quesadillas. They were so yummy. Um, it was like two years ago. So I'll make your quesadillas for. Oh, the- nice. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> so that's what I'll do. Um, but your your courses sound absolutely incredible. I am excited for a lot of people to see your recipes and experience the course and everything. I'm sure it's going to be like super amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, let me just. Che- I don't think we have any questions. I think people just joined. Uh... Yeah. yeah. And for those of you joining, um, 
we are just both a part of the awesome ultimate vegan health and weight loss bundle that has over 120 that has 122 contributions but there's like over 70 of us that collaborated to put together all unique and new stuff that's in the bundle because we were both in the bundle last year and everyone made something new and we just all put it in the bundles together it's been super exciting there's a ton of plant-based recipes and that's what we were just ch chatting about with chef yin with her raw vegan recipes the mexican food and the asian food it sounds incredible i'm so excited to make these videos this weekend um yeah, yeah. And it's all worth over six thousand dollars, but it's only forty nine dollars for ten days. And we're on. Are we on day five right now or day four? Five. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I think day four. Depending on which part of the oh, true. world you're in, right? <laughs> I I know we're like about halfway through the bundle. So there's like another five or so ish days I think left. So yeah, and and then it's gone forever it's only it's 49 dollars though right now and it's it's really amazing and the best part is you can just click the links in both of our bios and you can actually see what's offered in the bundle so like we're chatting about it right now but oh oh my gosh yes stacy you got to get in on these recipes we were just talking about your um about your muffins earlier stacy that i made they were super delicious yeah. like everybody about them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I made Stacy's um, carrot cake overnight oats as well for my boyfriend for breakfast. So he had that yesterday. Oh, yeah. oh from the ten day detox challenge by Stacy as well. So, oh, amazing! I love carrot cake like anything. <laughs> I think I'll have to make that next time. <laughs> but yeah, I know there's so many amazing recipes. I think there's over like two thousand recipes in this bundle. So it's just like it's just you have to get this bundle because it's just amazing. Like it's worth over $6,000, but it's only $49. It's just amazing. So, yeah. yeah. And it's not just recipes because um, there are a lot of, um, well, doctors contributions in the bundle like you. And then there's also Dr. Furman, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Nikki Davis, um, Dr. Colin Zhu, you know, I think there are like more than a dozen. Someone, I think, um, I think Lisa mentioned there's, I think like at least 13 doctors in the bundle. And, um, I've been part of, I think this is the seventh time I'm in a bundle and only Chef AJ's bundle has doctors. All the others don't. Oh, you know? oh all the others are just like recipe creators probably? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Oh, so yeah. that's awesome. So this is like a very unique bundle in that it's recipe creators, right? Yeah. It's trainers, it's doctors, it's yeah. nutritionists, like it's just a lot of different people collabing together, right? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really special yeah. bundle. I love being a part of it because I feel like mm. I get to meet these people like you and Stacey <laughs> and just uh yeah I get to collaborate with everybody it's just so fun yeah so guys check it out check out um you can check the link in Dr. Stephanie Pico's uh, bio or in my bio and then um see if you want to get it it's gonna end on 12th of February so and then after that it's going to be gone you won't get the exact same bundle again and I always have people messaging me and going like, can you extend it? Like once it ends and then the next day they're like, oh, I missed it. Or like, I, I, you know, I was traveling or like, um, you know, I had to pay my credit card bills first and then like, can I do it now? And I'm like, no, we keep saying that it's only, you know, it's only yeah. this time period and then that's it. You know? I know, I know. I always feel bad. That the same thing happened to me last year too. And I was like, oh, I feel so bad because yeah, I wish we could extend it, but it's just for the 10 days and then that's it. So it's just like, ah. so definitely like hop on it now and go to our bios and check it out. And um, you won't be disappointed if you get it. That's for sure. I know I have tons of things to go through. I'm excited. I have recipes the last three years, which is awesome. So <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to wrap it up now because I need to go and make breakfast. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's nine thirty in the morning, and my eating window is at ten, so I want to make it in. Yeah, and then and then, and then have it then. So um, thank you so much for for the chat and the conversation, and you know the 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 advice and on all the swaps and all that. And then um, thanks everyone for tuning in. And if people are watching the replay, you can leave your questions in the comments below. Just um, you know, t tag Doctor Steph or tag me, and then we'll answer your questions as well. Um, after that, yeah. So. <laughs> Um, so great. It was so wonderful getting to chat with you and I'm excited to make your quesadillas this weekend. Yeah, so thanks for talk. <laughs> I'm excited to see it. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, yeah, uh, I'll be watching the rest of your lives for the rest of the week as well. Yes, same to you. Absolutely. Well, enjoy the rest of Bundle Week and it was great chatting with you. Bye, everybody. All right, bye.